Hi there, my name is Caitlin Allman, and I'm a sophomore undergraduate student at St. Lawrence University. Over this past year, I've been doing independent research with help from my advisor, Dr. Erica Barthelmus. Because my interests lie in applied animal behavior, ecology, and dogs, I've decided to learn more about a unique non-invasive sampling method for animals in which dogs are trained to become conservation canines, also known as scat detection dogs. In the field of conservation biology, interesting and often endangered animal species are monitored in their natural habitats. Scientists try to better understand aspects of life history, including dispersal, migration, demographics, and population size. When conservation biologists are studying the animal's habitat, they often use non-invasive sampling methods for cues, including following tracks, using remote cameras, and assessing antler hair from deer rubs. Biologists often can't avoid a visual sampling bias when monitoring species, but within the past decade, man's best friend, the domestic dog, has been assisting with wildlife research. Humans and dogs have already been working together for hundreds of years in the military, medical field, with herding, and in search and rescue. All dogs have one trait in common, a fantastic sense of smell. Dogs have 50 times the olfactory receptor cells in their nose and a larger olfactory bulb region of the brain when in comparison to humans. When using their noses in wildlife conservation, object-driven, high-energy dogs sniff out the target species scat, also known as animal feces. Dogs benefit from this training by being rewarded with their favorite tennis ball or a treat after detecting this amazingly pungent scat. However, conservation canines don't get to find just any scat. They are trained to find the scat from a specific species of animal. For example, the dog will be trained to find the scat of a Pacific pocket mouse in particular, not just any rodent. Dogs can differentiate between the scents of different species, and being so precise increases the number of scats collected. When a handler, scat detection dog, and a guide, who's usually called an orienteer, sit out in the woods, the dog searches for the scat of the target species and sits to notify the handler of the scat. The scat is then collected for or by a researcher who can perform many tests on the scat, including DNA, hormonal, or a dietary analysis. Several organizations in the United States train conservation canines, most of which are in the Pacific Northwest. These organizations include the University of Washington Center for Conservation Biology in Eatonville, Washington, Working Dogs for Conservation in Three Forks, Montana, and Pack Leader Dog Training based out of Gig Harbor, Washington. For several months, and with lots of assistance from a few UW conservation biology handlers, I trained a four-year-old black Labrador retriever named Tulip to become a conservation canine. She has been trained to detect porcupine scat in the forests of northern New York. Porcupines usually defecate from the trees they rest in, or in seasonal dens. Though these mammals are fairly habitual about where they defecate, with Tulip at my side, I hope to find scat that isn't visible to the human eye.